Uh, my name is John Addison, and uh, I'm a member of the Suncoast Center for Fine Scale Modeling in Odessa, which is uh, probably houses the finest modeling in the world, one of the places. There's probably two or three places like it in the world, but there's no place in the southeastern United States like it. And uh, I'm also a member of the Suncoast Model Railroad Club in Largo, Florida. I'm doing a lot of scenery work and some buildings and stuff like that here. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, weathering freight cars, and it's. Uh, I'm going to show you the way to do it. There's. Uh, that's pretty simple, pretty, pretty laid back. You can get some pretty nice results. Um, this is not the seventy or eighty dollar uh, cars that you see uh, you know, on the internet. Those cars. A lot of guys spend hours and hours and hours working on one car. This is not that. This is uh, to get a nicely weathered train and to do it quickly. Because I have a lot of freight cars. I've already got, I think, like 32, 33 on my train at the club. And um, I like to run long freight trains. And I like them to be weathered. And I like my engines to be weathered and all that kind of stuff. And, and I keep them there so other people can use them whenever they want. So I got a little sign on and tell them if they want to run it, go ahead, just put them back there when they're done. <laughs> okay, to get started, the first thing we're going to talk about is like weathering the roofs of these these roof walks. Some cars, some this is a little 36 footer. I think this is an Atlas car which I bought here at uh, Zitniks, and it's a uh, they're really nice cars. Okay, these they have fine detail on them. The only drawback to them is the couplers are are worthless on them. So you have to change the couplers out if you buy one with Katie's. But anyway, you want to make sure you want to make sure that you uh, you're careful when you handle them because, like I said, you're even when you're working on them. I've broken these little dudes off all the time. But they just, they are fine runner, and they have high, high detail. Now, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna take some yellow, and I'm gonna put a little bit on this paper towel, which I'm gonna double and triple up here. Like so. The yellow's a little bit runny, but that's okay. This is some white. It's an off-white, it's antique white. And then I'm going to finally take some raw sienna. I'm putting all these here. Now what I'm going to do, take my brush here, and I'm mixing the colors together. I don't want too much yellow. I just want enough. I'm creating like a wood because when they did these cars, what they didn't want to have happen is they didn't want to have um, these roof walks painted. They wanted a lot of times they came painted, but they would kind of scrape the paint off because they didn't want guys falling when they got up there. And uh, so what they would do is they would they would kind of scuff them up and whatever because they didn't want guys just toppling off here. Here's another one you can see real well. Now this is just something, a little detail that you can do, and it makes all the difference in the world. I'm adding colors to it as I go, taking my finger, spreading it down. Kind of dulling it up a little bit with my finger. You'll see me using my fingers a lot doing this because it's, uh, it, it's a necessary thing to control how much you get. Again, you can see that right there. Now this one right here is a little yellow to my liking, so what I'm gonna do is take this brush right here and dip it into white. In fact, I'm gonna get some more white because I'm not happy with, my white got too much yellow mixed in it. And I don't really want that. But I'm gonna come back here and I'm going to highlight this a little bit. If I get too much off I, on there, I just wipe, wipe it off with my fingers. And now it starts to look like it's got a little scuffing on it and stuff. Just like so. 
don't know if you can see that or not, but I'll pass it around eventually. Uh, here's one right here. That I, here's one right here that I'm working on at home. I haven't put this on the uh, layout yet. Get some more paint off. When you're dry brushing, you want to try to get a lot of paint off of there. And just try to hit it. Kind of real light. If you get too much on there, it's no big deal. And rub it, rub it off. But the idea is to make it look, you don't want it to be even. You want it to be scuffed here and there, and other areas are not so scuffed. So that's what you want. And now that starts to look like, instead of plastic, it starts to look like wood. And that's how you, that's how you do the roof walks. And they all, like I said, they, it's just a necessary thing to try to highlight them. You can come back with a wash over the top of it later on if you want to try to find the cracks and crevices. You can easily do that. This car is in the process of being worked on as part of my, in that video you saw it go by, may or may not remember it, but uh, it's in the process of being, sometimes I go down to the club and I'm down there and I'll not do anything, I'll take them upstairs and start weathering them upstairs and stuff like that, try to work on them and stuff. Um, now for metal roof cars, uh, that's a little bit, little bit different. We use some raw sienna. This is uh, barn red, which is uh, very close to burnt sienna. It's got a little bit more blue in it, I think, but it doesn't really matter, so close. And uh, here's some orange. And then this is called payment. And it's actually, uh, it's pretty dark though. It's just dark, it's almost black. It's a really dark, whoops, it's really dark gray. So what we're gonna do with these is I'm gonna start out with the black here. They're almost black. And I'm going to just show you on the edge of this car. I'm going to stipple on black here and there. I'm just going to do this one corner here. Acrylics are, the beauty about acrylics is they dry so fast. The maddening thing about acrylics is they dry so fast, so. <laughs> It's kind of one of those things that uh, you kind of have to learn to work with. What I'm doing here is I'm dipping into raw sienna now, and I'm stippling this on here real arbitrarily light, kind of just trying to and then I'm going to come back with some um, this is a process. The next color I'll come back with, I'm going to let that dry a little bit, and I'm going to come back with some um, orange after I do the uh, barn red. Now, this is a number four odd brush right here. It's a really small brush, and I'm going to show you what you can do with it. It's just simply raw sienna. Now, I'm going to do down here, there's some hinges on this car and I'm going to stroke downward taking my finger I'm lightly hitting the I'm lightly hitting the hinges with this what I'm doing is I'm trying to apply some some rust detailing to this without going into getting too crazy. I'm hitting the up here, anywhere that I think that there would be rust, that I know there would be rust, because after a while that's what's going to happen to this car. Now I'm going to go right back into this barnyard red. I'm going to 
do the same thing over the same thing. Now, what I'm doing is I'm darkening. I'm darkening the uh, rust a little bit with a little more red in there. And if you get too much in there, you just take it and dip in your water here. And go in here and just wash it off. Right now, you can wash it off, but five minutes from now, <laughs> it's a different animal then. I said, if you get too much on there, you just come back in and just... Now, of course, for the clinic here, I'm doing this. I'm doing this kind of fast, but for if I was doing it, you know, I'd take my time a little bit more than I am now. But what I'm doing is showing you the techniques. Again, you take the water on your brush, a clean brush. Come here and wash off off a little bit here and there. I'm going to pass this car around now. You can see the you can see the door and stuff and how it's done. And you get a good idea. That's just with raw sienna and um, burnt sienna, or in this case, barn red, which is the same thing really. But that's all it is. That's all I'm using to do that. Now you can also take, like for instance, this is a reefer. This is one of the club cars I've been messing with. It was sitting up there bright, shiny, white. Now this was washed with a, it was washed with an oil wash, a Payne's Gray wash. But I'm gonna show you on this what you can do. If you wanna get some dust and dirt on the bottom, quickly I'm gonna use some acrylic here. I dipped into the payment. Which I'm going to pull out right here. And I'm going to stroke upward. If you, I don't know if you can see that, but it's already changing. What I'm doing is already changing it. What color are you using? This is payment, which is really a really dark gray. You can also use black. really can use wow. black like that what it's doing is it's already changing <coughs> adding dirt to the bottom of it now the reason it is going to stick on there and stay on there the reason is because of the fact the car already has a flat finish I use some Krylon matte finish to spray the car with initially um, I'll show you another little trick you can do you can take your brush, let me find one over here, and you can dip it in a little bit of white. There's a little bit of payment in there, more white. So now I'm making like a off gray color. You can come in here and you can highlight these trucks a little bit. To make them show a little bit. You get too much on there, you just come back. In this case, I'm going to come back with some raw sienna and go over the top of it, dull them down a little bit. Now they really jump out at you there, so I'm going to tone them down by adding some more payment, which is dark, dark, dark gray literally the color of dark payment if you know what and you all know what that is so what i'm doing is i'm gonna dull them down a little bit more they're not quite so intense now i've got them more like what they should be now you can take any color i got this brush right here this is one of these cheapo brushes but I'm gonna get some more raw sienna raw sienna is one of my favorite colors for for weathering stuff rusting stuff I just it's just a great color 
great color for scenery, for staining rocks, no matter what you're doing. I'm going to brush this in a little bit with some raw sienna and kind of highlight this, lighten it up a little bit. Take my fingers, very subtle, very subtle. Again, I'm dry brushing most of the paint off, so I'm not. That's what I'm trying to do is dry brush all the, get all the paint off before I start dry brushing. Like I said, it's very subtle to do. Again, on this side, I'm going to, again, take the pavement and come back with that. And put some more dirt. Get too much, it's okay. Use your finger. Put this right here. Oh, sure. And you can rub it up with your finger. The idea is... You don't want to see lines, as if you can help it, except where there would be lines. Sometimes, sometimes there will be lines that can't be helped. But I'm brushing upward. Very lightly. And it's changing right before your eyes. Mm -hmm. You can see it right there. Now the idea of this car is, um, <laughs> this car has been used a lot, and um, I'll pass it around. The hinges up here were done simply with a small brush like this. I dip it in some raw sienna, and then I go here and kind of just hit them. Take my finger over there, and then hit this hinge right here. Come back with some barnyard red. Try to take away some of the raw sienna look that's here. Now I'll pass this car around. You can see the trucks. You can see both sides, what I've done on both sides. I'll probably work on the door and the rusting on this a little bit more. Like I said, I was rushing this for the class. Um, and it's a club car, so it's, <laughs> I'm not really worried about it. <laughs> um, now, this, this car right here is also a club car. And I spent about 15 minutes on this to get this to look like this. That's all. And this was all done with oil washes, okay? Um, there's uh, a raw sienna in this. There's my favorite rust color. This is called transparent orange iron oxide paint. You have to buy this. You can't get this at Michaels or Hobby Lobby. You have to get this online. Uh, I've never seen it anywhere else. And uh, the problem with oils is they're very sticky, messy. They get, <laughs> yeah, they just do. They, they, uh, yeah, I keep them in a plastic bag and let them all stick together and then I pull them out when I have to work on them because they make a big mess. But they are very effective for weathering things, for weathering structures especially, wood structures, even plastic. If, they have, if you have a good dull coat on the plastic brick, they are very effective for final weathering. Uh, washes of, you know, dark, like this paint's gray. This is a very dark, almost black, gray. It's very dark. It's a wonderful color. I use it in all kinds of stuff. Here, I'm going to pass this around. You can kind of see I, I messed around with this yesterday, really. It was a perfectly good looking car. <laughs> Didn't have any weathering on it at all when I started. Um, I'm going to show you real briefly how to use oils. Okay. You need odorless mineral spirits. And we're going to get a paper towel here. I'm going to see if I got something over here. What is this? Ah, perfect. Use this right here. Now, the problem with oils is they, they take a while to dry. You're not going to, oils are going to be, 
just going to take a while. And you're going to have to be patient, more patient with oils. But you can get some beautiful results with it. Now this is Payne's Gray. You can see when I put it out, it's just about black. This is great for all kinds of stuff. I mean, you just, you can't believe what you can do with it. Now I'm going to take this brush right here. And uh, this is another club car. I actually donated some metal wheels to this one. It had no wheels at all. It was setting up on the shelf. It was perfectly clean two days ago. It didn't have a, it looked brand new. <laughs> and, uh, but I'm going to mess around with it here a little bit. Now, I dip it into the thinner, and then into the Payne's Gray, and then more thinner. Now, oils are, are easy to control. They really are. But, like I said, they take a while to dry. You can do some really incredible stuff with oils, but you have to be patient. It's best to do it like this, and then let the car just kind of, kind of sit flat, okay? And let those colors let it dry on one side, and then you can come back and do the other side in an hour or so. And then you try not to touch it at all because it'll you get all kinds of have all kinds of problems if you do the. The roof on this, I tried to get it to dry, but it didn't dry. I did it last night. But you can see the roof is already starting to look like metal. And I didn't bring a pencil with me, but if you take a pencil with a graphite in it and you run it on certain places on the metal, it looks like it makes it look like metal. Like exposed metal that's not rusted. You know how things get where you got rust, but then you got exposed metal. Well, pencil, the graphite on a pencil is a great way to do that. By the way, in weathering the wheels, if you look at a lot of my, uh, this right here is a, a a stock car that I put some, I left the door open, I put some hay in there, just something to make it a more more interesting. Uh, this car was dry brushed with an off-white, probably this antique white. All the rust on here that you see was all done with a fine a fine brush like a number four like I showed you earlier and it was just dabbed on here one color at a time first it was a uh, some cases there was a little black then there was a little a little raw sienna then a little barnyard red and finally you had some orange it's very subtle but if you photograph this against the right backdrop it'll look like a real freight car mm -hmm. okay and that's what this whole purpose, the whole purpose of weathering is to make things look more real. You know, that's the whole purpose of it. So and make it look more interesting. I mean, it's one thing to have a beautiful, beautiful trains go by and you see these beautiful cars and just, we got guys at the club, man. They run the most beautiful freight cars. There is no weather, <laughs> weather on any of them. And uh, that's fine. I, mean, I don't have a problem with that. But if you take a picture of any of those cars, they're so bright and shiny that they're not going to, they're like you just rolled out of the paint shop. I mean, they won't even, I mean, they're shinier than that. So they, they won't think, you know, and the reason manufacturers make them like that is they want to have a nice gloss coat on them to protect them. Then you can do whatever you want to them, but, but you have to, you have to, like I said, dull them down first. Now here you can take a look at this. You can see the, the trucks have been worked on. This is a good example. This is a real good example of just everything I'm talking about here. John, uh, why would you want to use uh, oil over acrylic or wind? Well, you don't necessarily use them over acrylics. You can. I don't mean overlap, but I mean in place of. Well, oils are, uh, um, they are, they, they get into crevices and cracks better. Than, than acrylics do. In other words, especially if you're working on wood or anything that looks like wood, is made to look like wood, like this car right here is made to look like wood. 
the oils will get into all these cracks on this reefer really, really well. They'll find every capillary, especially if this is laid flat like this and you wash it on. And you can wash some powders. I brought some Bragdon powders here, some weathering powders. Different companies make those, but it just, they define everything, in, in, especially in like wood, like this roof walk right here. If I wash that with an oil wash, it will find every single crack and crevice and it will it'll it'll highlight stuff it's just they're amazing I mean they they really are but they are they take patience because they do not dry quick this car is wet it looks wet and it's going to be wet for a while you know it's not gonna I mean it's it's gonna I'm have to lay on top of all my freight cars when I leave here because it's it's gonna be it's never gonna dry that's the real advantage to it the way they find detail and make it pop Especially if you're working on a wood structure, if you're building a wood building, your final thing to do, especially if you put like nail holes in them and all the stuff that I do to them, the final thing to do is you want to make sure that you wash it with an oil wash. And that will that will creep into all the capillaries, all the nail holes. It'll all that stuff will pop. I used to use um, acrylic washes and shoe dye washes and what happens when you put nail holes in there and then you wash a wall with a shoe, first of all it wants to warp and the way to prevent warping is to use oil washes and paint both sides of it with a wash and it won't warp but the thing is with those acrylics they would make all those nail holes shrink up they make your wood grain shrink up everything shrinks all that maybe you put a lot of detailing in, in the boards on that building and they just they shrink it all up with an oil wash and using some Bragdon powders, some dark uh, soot colors, it finds that oil washes into everything, every single capillary, every wood grain, everything. It, st stuff that you, don't, you didn't even see was there, it pops and makes it look real. John, so. are the Tamaya panel line accent colors, which are kind of, like, kind of thin and do they do the same kind of thing as an oil wash, or is that different? You have to, yeah. Well, you have to use them with a, with a with, if it's an oil-based paint or a lacquer-based paint. That's the thing. If it's an acrylic-based paint, it's not going to do the same thing. Okay, I think theirs are acrylic-based. If you're using, you know, if you want to make, you could make a wash out of a tester's enamel paint if you had a, enough thinner with it. Mm -hmm. But it'd be, you'd be better off just to use uh, these guys right here to get the job done. Yes, you know, otherwise you're going to be... Now, here's one of my favorite cars. Again, this is one I bought here. I'm not trying to promote the store, but <laughs> I did buy them. I bought a lot of my freight cars here, and they have some great deals. Uh, Atlas cars are one of my favorites. Those are the ones with the couplers that you need to change out. It's just the way the manufacturer makes them. They use these cheap plastic couplers, and you'll be pulling a train, and it won't. it'll work for a while. And then you'll be going up the hill at the at the Suncoast Club, and psh, out mm -hmm. it comes, and you got thirty cars rolling backwards because <laughs> one coupler broke loose. <laughs> and then you look at the coupler, and it's jammed open like this, and so like your cars are rolling down, and some guy's coming up the hill, and now he's. <laughs> I've had those things happen, so you just it's just not worth it. It's better just to change them out, but they are a gorgeous car, as you can see. This is one of my favorites. And this, you can see, the, this has got everything on it. This has got, I'm showing it up for the camera here, but this has got everything on it. It's got all the rust streaks, the, the weathering, a little bit of everything on it. It's a, it's a beauty. That's a 36-footer, wow. which is one of my favorites. Now, again, I'll show you. This is a car I've been working on at the club. This has got, um, this is one of my, my cars. I'll show you on this one right here real quick. I'll pull out some um, this guy right here. This is the transparent iron orange oxide paint. Now you can dry brush this color on. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it is an amazing rust color. 
Uh, military modelers use this color a lot. Mm -hmm. That's kind of where it bled over into the uh, model railroading, is military modelers. They're very weak on, on scenery and stuff like that, but they're very strong on, on structures and weathering stuff, especially weathering stuff and tanks and all that stuff. We all know that because you've seen any of their work online. It's amazing. Um, but anyway, I'm going to streak this where you can kind of see it a little bit. Just kind of being subtle with it here. If you can see that or not. Over here on the ladder. You can, I don't know if you can see that. I think you'll be able to see it when I pass it around. And uh, I haven't weathered the wheels on this car. And what I do with the wheels is I take a uh, liquid dull coat and I paint the end around the, I take the wheels off and I paint around, not the part that's going into the truck, but the other, but the other part that you're gonna see. And I'll paint it with dull coat and then I just come in and um, that's what's happened to this one right here. This one has a, this one right here has a, you can see what the wheels look like. I put a gray on them or black or, you can see it on that one real good. And this again is the little, this is the oil, again the oil wash. As you can see it's very subtle. But you can see how it already found all the uh, wood grain and stuff. And I can come back, because it won't dry for a while, I can come back and take some um, odorless mineral spirits and I can wash that down even some more so I can dull it down some. Because it won't dry for quite a while. So that is definitely the beauty of it all. Now as far as airbrushing goes, I, of course I didn't bring an airbrush, but airbrushing is easy to overdo. Um, I've uh, overdone it, I know. It's uh, you, uh, especially if using this color like dust, because dust goes on clear, and <laughs> you got a lot more dust there than you think you do. So the rule of thumb is, with an airbrush, you know, practice on an old car, or or put a paper towel up there and spray the paper towel, because what you don't want to do is you don't want to have, um, you don't want to overdo it and 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 wreck your car and and kind of. You just be kind of, kind of gentle with it. Just uh, spray a little bit. You know, have you got to have a good airbrush, and your paint's got to be mixed well, where it's a, really a wash more than a more than a paint, because you definitely don't want to spray paint, because it changes the airbrush changes it like that, and you you can't get it off unless you take thinner to it right away. You can't get it off because it just goes on there dry, hits it, and it's dry. So it's. <laughs> It's dry, well, it's dry in a couple of minutes anyway. So it's, it's on there. But it's a, they're great, uh, to, wonderful to use. Uh, guys, these cars that you see, they're really expensive. I talked about earlier, the $80 freight cars. A lot of that is airbrush work. And those guys have really fine tips, and they sit there, and they just, and it takes a lot of practice to get that good. It's like figure painting. You paint figures, you know, you can do it where I do I do two or three of the steps. I know all the steps. I do two or three steps. Or you can do it like my buddy Dave Ravella does, where you have, you know, go through all the steps. He may spend hours on one figure, but it, it looks like it. I mean, his jeans look worn. He has a belt. He has a buckle. He has a, you know, I'm talking O scale figure. Wow. That big has everything the flesh, the beard, it's all there. The eyes, eyeballs, wow. everything. But he goes through all all the steps, mm -hmm. <laughs> and he has really tiny brushes, really tiny. And there's a certain kind of paint you use for that too. So it's it's a process. Anyway, guys, um, that pretty much concludes it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. It's uh, it's fun. I mean, it's fun to weather stuff. I have a blast doing it. Sometimes I get carried away. I even 
now after I've weathered a lot of stuff, sometimes I, I, I ruin a car. I just, <laughs> I, I get carried away and it's just, you know, I overdo it. And it's easy to do, but it's all fun. I mean, the hobby's all fun. That's what it's all about. The great people you meet and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and weathering is a mixer. Like I said, it makes them look, you take a photograph or a video, they look a lot more real. You know, you see a train running around on the Sun Coast or, my, or up there in Odessa and it's weathered. It looks like the real deal. Oh, yeah. You see a train running around, a beautiful train without an ounce of weathering on it, and you know it's a model. Yeah, <laughs> you just do. I mean, and they're gorgeous. I mean, these guys have engines down at the, at the, at the Sun Coast uh, Club here in Largo. I wouldn't touch the engines. I had one of them ask me about weathering it. I said I wouldn't touch it. It's, the thing is beautiful, and I'd be scared to touch it almost. It's just, you know, but but they don't look in the photographs. They they look beautiful running in the video, but they don't look real in a photograph. They you know because they don't have any soot, nothing on them. But that's okay. Like I said, it's all fun. It's all you know. There's no right or wrong. So go have fun. Thank you guys. My name is John Addison and I want to thank you for watching my clinic on weathering freight cars. I'm here at Zitnik Trains and they have pretty much everything you need including these wonderful freight cars. And um, you can get all that stuff here so come on down you never know what you're going to find. I also am a member of the Suncoast Center for Fine Scale Modeling in Odessa, Florida. and. You need to come and see us. We're open the third Saturday of the month. We have models from all over the world, military modelers, trains, everything, something for everybody. And state-of-the-art museum, so you need to come down and see us. Thank you very much for watching again.